This video has been a long time coming. I've had a lot of requests for a video on the YOLO Live YOLO Box, and this right here is the new YOLO Box Pro. In this video, we'll start with an unboxing and then dive into every feature that this YOLO Box is capable of. We're gonna go through all the setup, all the configuration, and you'll see exactly how it works. By the end of this video, you'll know how to use your YOLO Box or know if this is the right product for you. Now, if you're coming here to compare the YOLO Box to the ATEM, that's in video number two. Part two of this series, I'm going to be comparing everything that the ATEM can do to what the YOLO Box can do. It's a pretty interesting comparison. There's a lot of overlap, but there's also a lot of uniqueness. So for that, you'll wanna stick around for video part two. But right now, let's get into the YOLO Box Pro. This is the YOLO Box Pro, an all-in-one system for switching, encoding, recording, and monitoring. And they mean it, it is all in one. Everything that you need to run your live production is in this little box. How do they do that? Well, it's a multi-camera production device with touchscreen control. You can go live up to 1080p. You have multi-view, built-in overlay and watermarks, which is honestly one of the coolest features about it. The things that you can build internally and overlay, pretty nice. And then an audio mixer, which I'm gonna say up front is one of the weakest things about it, but it's supposed to be getting better. Anyway, let's get into the box. Inside we'll find a nice little screen protector, the YOLO box itself. Two USB cables, USB C to C and C to A for charging. No charging brick though, so you will need to add that on your own. A small on-camera cold shoe mount. If you wanna mount the device on top of a camera for live streaming from a single camera, then this can come in handy. And then an Allen key and a SIM ejection pin because you can actually put a mobile SIM into the YOLO box. All right, let's get this out of the way and check out the hardware. You've got an HDMI in number one, two, and three. Three HDMI inputs, each one with a scaler on it. You can bring in just about any flavor of 720 or 1080 into this, and it'll scale to whatever production size you're doing. You have a type A USB port, which actually supports webcams, which is a really common request that I get for the ATEMs that's not supported on those devices, but is here, so that's nice. An ethernet port, an HDMI out, which can output your program or can output the same interface that you see here. So think of that like a multi-view out, and that's actually how I'll be recording the screen for you to see throughout this demo. A Type-C USB port, which isn't really used that much yet. Right now you can plug a keyboard into it, you can also bring audio in through that, probably a couple other things. But in the future, they will be adding webcam support. So you'll be able to plug a USB cable from here into your computer and treat this like a webcam. There's a headphone jack, two audio inputs, one at mic level and one at line level, and then another USB-C port specifically for charging. On the other side, we've got a quarter 20 hole for a tripod or that little mount that we saw in the box, an SD card slot, which is very handy. This is both for recording your show and for loading graphics onto the device, a SIM card slot that I alluded to earlier. This device actually has an LTE modem built into it, so you can, with a SIM card and of course an appropriate cell phone plan, live stream directly from this device without any external internet required, and then the power and sleep button. All right, let's get this thing set up. All right, I've got it in place. Let's start plugging things in. I'm not gonna plug in everything at once. We'll go a little bit at a time. I am gonna start, however, with an HDMI output. You can see here that I've already put together a bunch of options here, but we're gonna go ahead and plug in the HDMI out. That'll allow me to record the screen, whatever's happening on here. And I'm gonna plug in the ethernet as well. Now, you don't have to plug in ethernet to start. You can do this all over Wi-Fi. However, I've set up a few of these and I found that it is definitely easier if you can give it an ethernet connection to begin with. It just makes the whole process simpler. If you don't have one, that's fine. You can still do this over Wi-Fi, but you'll have to find and then enter the password for your Wi-Fi network and so on before you can do much of anything else. See, part of the initial process, which I've already done on here, is to create an account with YOLOBOX. And you do actually need to do that. It's part of how the whole thing is configured and also how you do some of your streaming. And we'll come to that a little bit later but you will need to create that account the first time you fire it up. I've already done that on here, so this setup process is gonna be a little bit easier, but once again, if you can give it an ethernet connection to start with, it just makes this a little bit easier. The next thing that I wanna plug in is my power. However, I'm not actually gonna do that quite yet, and here's why. This is a little tip that is, I don't know if I'd call this a bug or if it's just something that's been kind of an issue with these boxes from the beginning, but you can charge this. Remember, it has a battery built into it. See, this is a fully standalone piece. You charge this over USB, great. The problem is that if the device is fully charged and plugged in and you go to power it on, it won't power on. I don't know why, but it won't. You will need to unplug it from the power source and then power it on, and then you can plug the USB back into it. A little bit weird, but that's just the way it is. So remember that, unplug your power first if it's fully charged. So let's go ahead and turn it on. 
press and hold the power button on the bottom. And now we're ready to go. Now I'm going to go ahead and plug that power into there just to keep it fully charged. Let's go into the setup screen first. In the top right corner, you'll see a little man icon. Tap on that and you'll see all of your account settings. You'll see that I'm already logged into my YouTube account. If I tap on that, you'll see my YouTube live account. Then there's the Facebook account, which I'm not yet connected to. Just tap at the bottom to add the account. There's a Twitch account and then a standard RTMP stream. If you want to run on Wi-Fi, you can set up your Wi-Fi settings here. You'll see I currently have it turned off because I am on a hardline connection. We'll see here in the Ethernet settings, it's turned on and it doesn't actually show me my IP address. This is something that is not currently there, but I've asked them to add it and I'm sure that they will. And this is actually something I want to point out about the YOLO Live company, the makers of the YOLO box. They're actually really responsive. If you reach out to them on social media, support email, whatever, and you tell them about a bug or you give them an idea for a feature, odds are pretty good that they'll implement it or fix that bug pretty quickly. It's nice to work that way. All right, back out of here you'll see that I can set up a mobile network. So if I had a SIM card installed, I don't now, but if I had one in here, I would see the settings for that. Hotspot and tethering. I can actually connect via Bluetooth to my cell phone. So if I wanted to use my phone as a tethering device to stream in the field, instead of putting a SIM in the hardware itself, then I can do that as well. Backing out of the network settings, you'll see there is a network test, which is simply opening a website that will run speedtest.net. Now, this is kind of an interesting thing about this box. The operating system that it's running is Android. This is an Android operating system. So you'll see some things that pop up that'll look a little familiar for an Android user. And you'll see some things come around that don't necessarily make sense in here because they don't have any place in a box like this. It's just parts of the Android operating system that are in there. But this also means that it can be updated pretty easily with new features added. So anyway, that's just how that's working. You see the email address you registered with, the language if you want to change that, your time zone, a few other details, an FAQ at the bottom. And then at the very bottom of this, there is the screen rotate. This is a new option that was added to the YOLO Life Pro in a recent update that allows you to flip the screen upside down. So if you wanted to mount the device upside down under let's say a gimbal handle or something like that, now you can do that. Simply tap on OK and it will rotate that screen. Let's go ahead and put that back again. And that's pretty much it for the settings. Now let's go back to the main screen and create a show. To do that, you tap on the plus on the bottom right corner. And you have two options. You can create a new live show, or you can create what's called a monitor mode. Monitor mode is just like a regular live event, except that it's not set up to go live anywhere. So you can use this either for practice, just for playing around with things in here without having to set up a live show, or you can also use it if you just wanted to do a live stream on the HDMI output onto, let's say, a projector or something like that. One thing to point out, though, is that once you create a monitor mode event and you back out of it, none of those settings are kept. This is actually a very new feature, this monitor mode, and it's missing a lot of things that you would hope that it would have, like the ability to save that show to use again later. So really just use it as a playground for now, but in the future, it will get updates where you'll be able to save those and then hopefully even replicate those to make alternate versions of an event. We're going to go ahead and create a live stream. And under live stream, we'll go ahead and give it a title. We'll just call this my live show. I can put in a description and the schedule, but both of those are optional. So I can set those up later on. Now at this point, when I tap create, I've just created an event inside of the YOLO box, but I haven't yet created an event on any of my live streaming services. It's not on Facebook. It's not on YouTube. It's not anywhere else yet. But to create that event on those services, it's just a couple more taps. I'll go ahead and open up that live show that I just created, and it takes me immediately to the platforms page. And you'll see up there that Photo Joseph Live is currently available, but not yet connected. And then Facebook, Twitch, and the custom RTMP all have link buttons allowing me to set those up from here, just as I could earlier in the settings page. The only one that I have configured right now is YouTube, so I'll go ahead and tap that. As soon as I tap that, I'm asked if I want to create a public, unlisted, or private event. I'm going to go ahead and make this one unlisted and tap done. Now this event has been created on YouTube. At this point, I can log into my YouTube page and I'll see the event. I could go in there and add a thumbnail to it, grab that URL for sharing it, marketing it, and so on. Update the description and the title and everything else. Now you will not see that thumbnail update on the device. You're not gonna see the description update on the device, but it is updated on the YouTube side. At this point, this has simply created that, added the keys that it needs on the YouTube side for the YOLO box to actually stream to YouTube. All right, now let's get into configuring the cameras and everything else for a live show. You notice on the screen at the bottom left, it says add video source. If I tap on that, it'll show me all the options that I can add from, including HDMI's one, two, and three, the USB, and everything else on there. So let's start by plugging in a couple of cameras. I don't actually have to add them from here. If I back out of here, I can just start plugging things in. So let's start with this one here, 
which is actually the same camera that I have right here, camera two on this view, is plugging into this. So now I have that same camera feeding into there, and you'll see it shows up right away as HDMI one. Next, I'm gonna take this one, which I think is my iPad over here. And sure enough, there's my iPad. So you can connect an iPad, which is gonna be outputting 1080i5994. That's just what the iPad's output, and that is being scaled to my show here perfectly. By the way, you can see at the top there that it is set to a 1080p show. All right, next, let's plug in my computer. Of course, these could be additional cameras, whatever you like. I'm choosing to use my computer and my iPad for this. Now we can see the computer is mirrored. Let's go ahead and make this full screen. And now I've got a way to, let's say, demo some software using the yellow box. Let's go ahead and plug in the webcam next. Now, this is actually a really common request that I get on the YouTube channel. People asking all the time how to connect a webcam to their ATEM. You can't connect a webcam to an ATEM, but you can connect it to the YOLO box, which is pretty cool. I can call up this camera by tapping on the USB source right there, and there we have it. There is my webcam. So there you go, that works. Okay, we're probably not gonna use this for much, but it's kind of good to know that the option is there. That's all my video inputs plugged in. I do have a couple of other things that I wanna add though. This black line is an audio input for the microphone. This is actually a feed from my mixer for this mic that I'm recording on so we can get good clean audio into the device. So that's there. And then I have this one here, which I'm gonna plug into the line in. And that one is actually just a music source. It's an old iPod that is running on a constant loop and that's feeding into here so I can have some background music. So we'll take a look at that in a little bit. There's also a headphone port on there so I can plug in headphones, not gonna do that now, but that would of course allow you to monitor on the set. All right, so now I've got everything configured in here that I want. Hey folks, Future Photo Joseph here. This guy forgot to tell you something really important. First of all, this is not a sponsored video. YOLO Live, of course, sent me the box to do the video with, but they're not paying for this video. They did, however, give me an extra box to give to you. So one of these days soon, I'm going to be doing a giveaway of the other YOLO Box Pro. Please be sure you subscribe to the channel so that you know when that happens. Second, you might have noticed as well that there's no ads on this video. I'm trying something new here where I'm not running ads on all my new videos, and instead I'm asking you, my beautiful viewers, to consider becoming a channel member. You can do that for as little as 99 cents a month. So if you feel like you're getting stuff off of my channel, consider subscribing, that'd be awesome. And I've actually just added one more thing to make it even better to subscribe. And that is a private Discord channel just for Photo Joseph channel paid members. So if you're a member of the Photo Joseph channel, you'll have access to a brand new Discord server. It's a little small right now, but it's gonna grow and it's gonna be beautiful. All right, guys, that's it. Uh, let's get back to the show, see ya. All right. Let's look at the software and see what else we can add in here. First of all, you'll notice that there is an add video source still underneath the four icons that we've got. So we have HDMI 1, tap on HDMI 2 and that brings up the iPad. HDMI 3 is gonna bring up my Mac. USB, of course, is gonna bring up that little webcam. And if I tap on add video source, I can now add additional inputs to this. We're gonna start with something off of the SD card. You'll see that I can load up to two videos off of SD cards. So I can have videos that are playing back directly from the YOLO box, but the way I add them is via the card. So I don't have a card loaded in here yet. I'll go ahead and pull out this little dummy card that's in here, take an actual SD card that I've already loaded with media and pop this in. And now with that in place, I can go ahead and load the graphics off of it. I'll start by tapping on SD card video one It'll scan the card, and I have one video clip on here called Drone. We'll go ahead and add that in. And now that's ready to go. I'll add another video source, and for this one, I'm gonna choose PDF. It's kind of a neat feature. You can actually load a PDF onto your SD card and then play that from the YOLO box. Think of this as a good way to do a simple slide presentation. Take your slide deck out of Keynote or PowerPoint, convert it to a PDF and load it down here, and then you have a simple, non-animated, but a simple page-by-page -page PDF slide presentation. I'll go ahead and load up a presentation I did a few weeks ago on the BGH1. Tap on done, it loads that in, and it's ready to go. To load that PDF, I simply tap on it here, and it loads it up onto the screen, and we can see it now in the output. You'll also see the page numbers at the bottom, so I can tap through those and see the different pages of that. If I wanna see my program bigger on this screen, I simply tap on the double-headed arrow, and that makes it larger across the entire screen. Now from here, for the PDF, I can't actually navigate the PDF, so it's a little bit awkward to do this way, but this does allow me to see whatever I'm doing bigger, and if I do wanna switch inputs, I can load this up, and now I can go back to, let's say, the SD card video button, which is gonna play that drone video, and away we go. To exit out of this full screen mode, just tap on the double-headed arrow, and it goes back again. 
At this point, all six video slots are filled. So if I wanted to add any other video sources to switch from, I would actually need to remove something that's here. And that includes setups like a picture-in-picture -picture or a split-screen layout and so on. So let's go ahead and get rid of a couple of these and we'll start adding things back in. To get rid of something, tap and hold on it for a second and a delete button pops up. Hit that trash can, it'll confirm, and away you go. So I just deleted the PDF. Let's go ahead and get rid of this USB camera as well. And now I've got two free slots. I'll add another video source. And this time I'm gonna choose the side-by-side -side video. It comes up with select A source. So let's go ahead and put me and HDMI one on the A side, tap next. And then for the B source, I'll put my HDMI three computer. Notice by the way that the USB web camera, hi there, is still here. Even though I've removed it as one of the available sources, it is actually still an available input, so I can reuse it somewhere else in the show, as long as, of course, it's still plugged in. I'll go ahead and though use HDMI 3, that's the computer, tap next again, and now I've got this side by side. I can change the spacing on here, and I can load a background image. Tap on that, and it's gonna once again look at the SD card and look for anything appropriate on there that I can use. So any of the images on there I can pull up. I've got a couple of background pieces in here. I'll go ahead and load one of these, tap on done, and now I have my layout. Tap done one more time, and there it is. When I wanna call that up, tap the side-by-side -side button, and there's my side-by-side -side layout with that custom background in there. Let's add another one. I'll tap on add video source again. This time I'll do a picture-in-picture -picture video. I'll choose HDMI 3 as the main screen, once again, my computer. And then for the sub-screen, I'll tap HDMI 1, that's me. Hit next. From here I can reposition myself wherever I want, change the scaling of my picture-in-picture -picture in there. I can even change the aspect ratio. So if I wanted to crop this, let's say to a one-to-one -one square or even a nine by 16 vertical, I can position myself in the corner, make sure I'm standing in the right spot there, tap on done, and now I've got this simple picture-in-picture -picture video, which could be once again very appropriate for doing software demos. And at this stage, I could switch back and forth between just the screen of my computer, HDMI 3, and the screen with me on it in the picture-in-picture. -picture. So really nice and easy way to set these up. Now, if you want to change something that you've done, you can do that as well. I'll tap and hold on that button again. This time you'll see there is a delete button again, as well as a new pencil icon. I'll tap the pencil, and that allows me to reposition or rearrange anything that I might want to change on there. Tap on done, and there we go. Now, a picture-in-picture -picture as a cutout is a cool thing to be able to do, but what about doing a green screen key? This is actually a pretty new feature that was added in a recent software update to the YOLO Live Pro. So let's get a green screen set up here. And now we'll drop out that green screen. So let's go ahead and clear out one of these PIP videos. I'll go ahead and delete that. And then to add a green screen key, we start with the source, in this case, HDMI 1. And you'll see there's a little icon up there of a person in the corner. We'll tap on that, enable keying switch. And just like that, the background is gone. Now you have two different color key types, green or blue. If I switch it over to blue, this obviously doesn't work. It doesn't really cut out my shirt, so that's good. But I go back to green and there the green's gone. If I go back into here, I can change the similarity, which is basically an expansion or contraction of how much is being keyed of that color. And then there's the smoothness, how smooth do you want those edges to be? It actually works really well on its default settings. So I'm just gonna go back to restore default and then turn on the keying switch again and away we go. Now the background image is something that I can add in here, adding a picture or anything off of the SD card. But what's much more interesting of course is to use another video source as a background image. So to do that instead, tap on done and then I'll go to add video source. I'm going to do a picture in picture video. I'm going to choose the HDMI 3, which is my computer as the main screen. Tap on next and then tap HDMI 1 as the sub screen. That's my keyed video. And there we go. There's me in the corner. I can make myself a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller, position wherever I want. And if I needed to crop something out, say I had some dark edges on there, I could crop those out by going to a square setup. That would allow me to crop that and then position it over to the side a little bit. And just like that, we now have a beautiful keyed video and we're ready to go. Let's actually look at this a little bit bigger. Now, one of the things that we can do in here I mentioned earlier is use the HDMI output as either a program out seeing the full screen or as a mirrored seeing the whole interface, which is what we're looking at now. Let's quickly switch over to the full program out so you can see this at full size. To do that, I'll go over to the gear menu in the bottom right corner and there where it says program out, simply tap on that and the image changes to give me a program out. So now we're seeing the whole image out on that HDMI output. This would allow us to record a full quality output or just to look at the full screen on a confidence monitor if you wanted to. I'll go ahead and turn that back off so that we can see the rest of the UI. And let's go back to the rest of the setup. Next thing we're gonna look at is overlays. I'm actually gonna go ahead and turn off this green screen because I kinda 
want to get rid of this thing behind me for the rest of the demo here. Forgot to Thanos snap that one out of here. Anyway, let's go on with overlays. This is a really cool part of this product as I alluded to earlier. So let's just jump into how we do this. You'll see here at the bottom that I've already switched over to the overlays mode, and then I'll tap the plus button to add an overlay. There's three different types, an image overlay, a lower thirds, and a countdown timer. We'll start with image overlays. This is gonna allow me to pull any image off of the SD card. Now this can be a full screen image, basically a photo that will just overlay everything, covering the entire image, or it can be a PNG file, which you can then scale and reposition wherever you like. Let's go ahead and use something like a fancy lower thirds that I created earlier. There's my fancy lower third. I can change the scaling of that. I can tap that and move it around on the scene to put it somewhere else on here or restore the default settings to put it back where it belongs. We'll go ahead and leave that there. Tap on done. Let's add another one. Another image overlay. This time I'll use an icon of me. This would be kind of my YouTube badge, if you will. We'll go ahead and make that nice and small and put that up into the corner up here. Pretty good. A little badging, a little network bug, that sort of thing. Let's add another one on here. How about a subscribe button? We'll go ahead and add this one in. Put that down into the bottom left corner. Good hint here. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Go ahead and put that down there. And because this is a PNG, it is supporting transparency. And while I didn't program any transparency into this PNG, you could certainly do that as you saw with one of the initial ones that I loaded up. We'll go ahead and leave that where it is. And now to call up any of these, all I have to do is tap on that overlay and it fades in. You can see there's that My Fancy Lower Third. I can bring in my network logo or whatever it might be. I can bring in my subscribe button. And each one of these can be added at the same time. They're kind of added in layers and they're added in the order of which you add them. So if you want one thing sitting on top of another, load the bottom one and then the top one after that. To turn them off, just tap them again and each one of those will get disabled. Let's go ahead back into Add and this time we'll add a Lower Third. These are lower thirds that are generated inside of the device, so you don't need a separate graphics package to create these. Pretty nice. We'll just choose this top one. And you can see here we have a bunch of different options. For the title, we'll go ahead and put in here Photo Joseph. And the subtitle, we'll put in Subscribe. There we go. And hit OK there. We can choose our font. We'll choose something really bold and big on there, change the title size on there, change the title color, the background color, the subtitle font, the size, the color. You see I have all these different changes in here. Let's go ahead and put this down on the bottom and then I'll do a subtitle offset. Let's actually do it this way, that's kind of cool. Change the scaling of the whole thing on there and there we go. There's my whole template completely created. I'll tap on done and I'll tap that new lower third title to bring it up. And just like with the other graphics, if I want to edit this, I can tap and hold on that then tap the pencil button and make any changes that I might need to make in there. If I go back into that lower thirds editor again, you'll see there's a variety of different options in here, including one called a rolling caption. If I go into the rolling caption, I can now enter in any amount of text in here and have it scroll across the screen. So let's just type something quickly here. This is a pretty cool product. Tap OK, tap done. And now when I call that up, you'll see that scrolling across the top of the screen. Let's go a little bit bigger, and there it is. And of course, again, I can change the font or any other number of things on there, but there's how that works. All right, let's back out of this, turn that off and the overlay, and let's go back into the plus again, and next we'll create a countdown timer. So yes, you have the ability to create a customized countdown counter for any duration that you want directly in the device. Nice, tap on countdown timer. We have a couple themes to choose from. I like this one. I can change whatever the show start text is. So I'll say the show begins, and then of course I can change the font on there, the color, all of that, and change the timing on this. Let's make this a little bit shorter so I can use it as a demo. We'll take this down and just make it a short five second countdown. There we go. So now I've got a five second countdown timer. A few other things I can change on here, scaling on there and so on, but we'll leave it as it is. Tap on done, and now I have that countdown timer. So when I'm ready to start a show, I can bring that up. You can see that it makes the whole scene dark, but I can still see the video back there. It's still there, and I've got that show beginning. As soon as it counts down to zero, it automatically disappears. Now, at the moment, it just cuts away. You can't make it fade away. And you might have noticed as well that all these other graphics automatically fade in and fade out. There's no adjustment over that either. But I have just asked YOLO Live to add that, to give me the ability to change the lower thirds so that they can cut or wipe or do any other transitions in and out. And of course, for the countdown clock, for it to be able to fade out instead of just cutting out as well. So I asked them for that just a couple of days ago. So uh, we'll see how quickly they add that in there. All right, let's go ahead and see what else we can do. 
that's everything in the overlays. The next option is the platforms, which is where we started. The next option is audio control. Now, I said in the beginning that the audio control on here isn't very good. It's very, very basic, and here's what that means. You'll notice here that I have all my different audio inputs listed. So everything that currently has audio is showing on here. It is by default set to automatic, which means it is going to switch to the audio input of whatever video source I switch into, which is probably not what you're going to want most of the time. So you're probably going to want either the audio coming in through a camera, like let's say HDMI 1, but if I get that now, you'll hear that this is not great audio because it's just the on-camera audio from the camera over there. But what I do have on here is my mic in, which is set to this actual microphone here, so you should be hearing that nice and clean now. If I want to bring in my music, I can go to line in, but then you don't hear me. So here's where we get into the limitations of this. You can only have a single audio source playing at a time. You can't mix them. I can't have multiple inputs playing simultaneously. Also, I don't have any audio control other than levels. I have no sweetening, no EQ, no compression, none of that. It's a very, very basic audio controller. However, with that said, YOLO Live has said that they are working on a much more advanced audio control system. So we'll see what they get. But for now, this is all that it is. Which means if you're doing a setup of a live show, like well, let's say you want to have your countdown and some music playing, and then when the countdown goes to zero, the countdown timer goes away and you're on camera, you're going to have to be sitting here very carefully timing, switching from music to your microphone. And there's going to be no soft transition. It's just going to be a hard cut from one audio source to another. Be aware that this is what you're working with. If you do want to do something more advanced, at least today, you're going to have to use an external mixer. But being that this is an all-in-one device, that's not what we want. So we do want to see more advanced audio controls coming. And again, YOLO Live has said that they are. That's basically all we've got in here to look at. There's all of our controls, as well as a monitoring adjustment at the top that controls the audio level output for the headphones, as well as for the HDMI out. Next, let's go to the scoreboard. This is kind of a fun little feature. If you're live streaming, let's say, a Little League game and you want to keep the score on screen for the friends and family watching at home, you can do that. It's pretty neat. Let's go ahead and set this up. Let's go ahead and turn that on. And the first thing I can do is position this wherever I'd like, make it a little bit bigger if I want to. So let's make it nice and big and put it on the bottom of the screen here. And you'll see it's already got a little bit of customization in there from before that I was playing with, but let's go ahead and make some more changes. Let's start by customizing the board. I'll scroll down to the bottom and tap on Team Info. And then from here, I can change the game name and a bunch of other things. Now, at this point, I can type everything on the soft keyboard as we've done many times. But one of the other cool features of the Yolo Box is that you can plug in an external keyboard, just a simple USB keyboard, so you can start typing from there. I actually have one here, so let me grab that. This is an old Apple USB keyboard, and I've actually added a USB A to C adapter on here just so that I can plug it into the free USB C port. I could also unplug the webcam and plug it into there, but I've got a free port, so let's just use this. As soon as I plug that in, we should see the interface drop away. Now the keyboard is active. You can see that I can now go ahead and do that. So let's go ahead and just change this to the big game. Hit return to accept that, and you'll see it update on the screen. We'll scroll down, and we can change the name of Team 1, Team 2. Let's call this one My Team. And then we'll change the other one to Your Team. And we can see the text updating there on the screen. You'll also see that we have team logos that we can add in. I've already added one for myself. If I wanted to add one on the other, I'd simply scroll down to the Team 2 logo, tap on that. It'll tell you that it's advisable that you use a 96 by 96 pixel PNG. I don't have one of those loaded, but you'll see that I can choose anything else. So let's choose that subscribe logo and add that in there. It doesn't necessarily fit because it's not the right size, but it will work. So in a pinch, you can do that as well. We'll tap on done. If I want to include a time in the game, I can add that. It can be a count up or a count down time, set in the time control to whatever I want it to be. Let's make it a five minute game, nice and long on there, and then hit play, and we'll see that that countdown begins. Now from here, of course, to keep score, I simply tap on the plus and minus buttons as the different teams score, and away we go. So we've got this live scoreboard included in the software. It's a pretty cool little feature to have that. It's nice to be able to do that if you are doing something again, like shooting a little league game and streaming that for the family at home. All right, let's see what else we've got in here. I'm going to turn the scoreboard off and move to the next one here, which is comments. Yes, you can have YouTube comments showing up directly on the device here and then even load them to screen. So let's actually show this. This event is created. This is a real event that I've created unlisted, but it's all ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and go live. I'll tap the go live button here. Are you ready to start live streaming? Why, yes, I am. 
I tap OK. We'll see up in the top left, you have status of the event, how much data has streamed, the current frames per second, how much has dropped, how long you've been live. And now I'm going to go over to my computer and find this event and comment on it. There's my live event. I'll say hello from the studio. And then back over here, looking at the comments page. In just a moment, we'll see that load up here. And there it is. If I want to show this up on the screen, I tap on the little bookmark icon there, and it loads that up on the screen. It's actually generating a graphic in real time and loading that to the screen. It's kind of a cool way that it works. And if I want to change how those comments look, I can do that as well. Up in the top right corner of this, I have a few different options of how I want the comments to look. So I'll go ahead and choose this one. I can once again change the font. I can change the transparency of that, the positioning of it, the scale of it, and so on. A lot to control over where those comments will go. It's nice and clean and simple, and you have that ability to not only see your comments here on a live show, but actually bring them up for the rest of the audience to see as well. Finally, let's take a look at the gear icon. That, of course, is the settings page. And let's see what kind of options we have for the show. You'll see there's a video source switching mode that is a click to switch or a double click to switch. Should probably say tap to switch, but there we go. So this is telling you whether you should single tap or double tap on any of the icons to switch. Obviously, a double tap takes longer, but then it will prevent from accidental switching. Under SD card video switch settings, you can choose what happens when you load up a video, whether it continues playing as a loop or restarts the video from the beginning and so on. SD card management really doesn't allow you to do much of anything here. I've never quite figured out what this is. There's nothing showing in here of what's on the card. So maybe this is a feature to come. Not quite sure. The program out we already looked at, video source transitions can be controlled in here. Now right now we've got everything set to a cut, just a simple cut. So as I go from HDMI 1 to 2 to 3 and so on, it's a simple cut. But I can change that to a fade, a wipe, a directional wipe and so on. So lots of different options in here to play with. Let's go for a page flip and then we'll make it a nice long one and a half to two seconds. Let's go for two seconds here. And now when I tap on another video, we'll see that it peels over to that video. So now we've got a couple different ways that we can do our transitions. Let's do a wipe next and go back to HDMI 1, and there's our wipe. Of course, we want to make that a little bit faster. Let's break it down to a half second, and now we'll do a simple fade, and let's switch over to another input. We'll do the side by side, and there we go. So lots of different ways that we can go about doing those transitions in there, along with the ability to change their duration from as little as half a second up to a full three seconds. Next, we have our streaming modes. And this is something I alluded to in the beginning that is a really important consideration with the YOLO Live YOLO Box. When you are streaming to YouTube or to Facebook or to Twitch, you have the option to either stream directly to them or to route through the YOLO Live servers. Now, why would you want to route through YOLO Live? Well, if you're just streaming to one platform, then you probably don't really want to. There's no reason to do it. It would just add latency that you don't need. However, what this box gives you is the option to stream to multiple platforms at once. Basically, YOLO Live is providing a free restream service. It basically comes with the cost of admission. When you buy the box, you get free restreaming service through their servers. So what I would do in here is enable using YOLO Live's multi-streaming service, and that would then direct the stream to their service. And then on my streaming page, I could enable multiple platforms at once and stream to all of them together. So that's really, really powerful and a very cool consideration for the YOLO box. Next up is video output mode. It's just switching the HDMI out from HDMI to display port. This might just affect different types of monitors that you're working with. If you plug it into a monitor that it doesn't work with, switch it to the other one and see if that helps. Now, I will say that with the HDMI out on here, we have had some experiences where it just doesn't work with every monitor we connected to. And when I say we, I mean we as YouTube reviewers. A lot of us are talking behind the scenes about this box, and it's something we've all run into. They have recently released an update to allow it to work with the ATEM hardware. So I can actually plug the HDMI out from here into an ATEM switcher, and it will work beautifully. And that's actually how I'm recording what you're seeing on this screen right now. However, it doesn't work with everything still. If I plug it into an Atomos Ninja recorder, it won't show up there. If I plug it into a standard conventional monitor or television, it'll work there. If I plug it into my Blackmagic HyperDet recorder, it doesn't work there. So it's a bit of a guessing game whether it's going to work or not. I would say, though, that if you find a piece of hardware that it does not work with, tell YOLO Live. They want to know so they can test and figure out what's wrong so that they can switch it as they like to do. So there's that. All right, back into the settings. Next, we have encoding settings. Now, this is a really interesting feature. You have three different encoding settings options. You have CBR, 
CQ, and VBR. CBR is constant bitrate. And you'll see there it says this is the default and recommended. So whatever bitrate you choose, and you can choose that down at the bottom, you'll see it's currently set to a 4,000 kilobit bitrate or four megabit. And also the frames per second is set to 25, which is odd, I probably should have set that to 2997. Anyway, you can choose to have a constant bitrate. So it's always using that same bitrate. You can also choose CQ or constant quality. This is going to always maintain the same quality as much as possible while varying the bitrate. So your bitrate might go up or down just to make sure that your quality always stays the same. And finally, there's variable bitrate, which is not that different from constant quality, but variable bitrate will vary the bitrate depending also on your bandwidth. So if it sees you have lower bandwidth, it'll automatically scale it back, slow it down a little bit so that you can continue with the live show. As bandwidth opens up, it'll try to pump that back up again. So different options on there, but I would certainly recommend sticking with CBR unless you have a good reason not to. The last option on here is recording limits. Now this is a little bit of a strange option and then it doesn't seem to actually work the way you would expect it to, but um, it's also a brand new feature, so maybe it's just not fully functional yet. You'll see on here that you have the options to have your video recorded and saved every 10, 20, 30, 60 minutes or continuously, meaning that it would stop recording and start again, creating a new file every 10, 20, 30, or 60 minutes. This can be a good idea because if your show is interrupted for some reason, you lose internet, you lose power, someone trips over a cord, you drop the thing, whatever, you might end up losing the entire show if everything's being recorded to a single file. The idea where it breaks up the file every 10 minutes means that you have at least all those files up until that last break. So that's what it's for. However, the reason I say that it doesn't work as expected is this. I've got it set to continuously right now. To record, notice in the top right-hand corner of the preview monitor, there's a record button. I'll tap that. It's going to tell me that I have 30 gigs of free space, but it's going to create a new file every three and a half gigabytes, which is a little bit of a strange arbitrary limit. It doesn't matter what the recording options are set to, it's always going to say that. You might think that it's because it's a UHS-1 card, but if I put in a UHS-2 card, that doesn't make any difference either. So. I don't know what this is. My guys at YOLO Live couldn't get back to me to tell me what it was before I recorded. So I don't know why, but just hit record. It'll record your show. So if I start recording right now, you can see that record option up in the top right corner is flashing and it is now recording the program to the SD card. All right, that's the interface in here. Let's back out of this. I'm going to stop recording and I'm going to stop the live show. And you see, you get this dialogue. Do you want to pause the live stream event or end it? I'm going to go ahead and end this. When I tap end, it's going to drop me out of this interface back into the main screen. You'll see that it shows that my live show has ended. And you might think at this point, ooh, I want to take that live show and duplicate it and do the whole show all over again. Yeah, that'd be cool. You can't do that. This is a high priority feature for YOLO Live to implement. They know this, they've heard it, they're working on it, but to date, you can't. So what this means is that if I wanna create another live show, I simply have to tap on the plus, create a new live stream and set everything up again. However, the lower thirds, the graphics, all those things that I created are still there. So I'm not having to create everything from scratch, but I will need to set up my picture and picture my green screen king and things like that again. I'll back out of this. And if I want to delete an old show, simply tap and hold on that. and It'll pop up dialog. Are you sure you want to delete my live show? We'll hit okay. And there it is, she's gone. That's all there is to it. That's everything in the YOLO Live YOLO Box Pro. There might be more features that I missed, but I don't think so. I think I've covered all of them in here. But of course, depending on when you're watching this, there are probably new features already added because as I said earlier, there is new stuff constantly being added to the YOLO Box Pro, which is pretty exciting. Now, as I said in the introduction, this was all about the YOLO box, but I know a lot of you want to compare this to the ATEM, which I fully understand. I'll reiterate that while there is a lot of overlap between the two devices, there is a lot that is unique on both of them. So to learn what that is, please tune into video number two, which is gonna come up right around here somewhere right about now. So check that out and we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Oh, great.